Welcome to the Jada Edwards podcast. It's season two, and I'm still sharing with you what God is sharing with me. Gosh, I'm so excited for you to be on our podcast today. Thank you for joining us. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Girl, you're the best. <laughs> um, okay, so I was trying to remember when we first met. Was it at a Bible study? It was at a Bible did study. Did you come up to me at a Bible study? I sure did. Captive <laughs> mind. Well, no, you had already done the Captive Mind series. So I think the next one was Bold or Thirst. It was one of those, Bold or Thirst. Yes, I think so. And it was towards the end. Um, and I just walked up to you like, I just, like, <laughs> this was just amazing. You was like, uh huh, you look like my assistant, Brittany. <laughs> 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 you did yes, and you still look like Brittany. Um, not as much because I know you know me. But then yeah. I was like, let's have lunch. Yes. And then yes. we went to Boston Market. I don't know why I remember that. <laughs> Probably because I'm not really a fan. I don't know how we ended up. Brittany. Right. Booked us at Boston <laughs> just, Market. Just booking yes. places. Yes. Like, ma'am, let's raise the palate. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and it, it was dry, and I was trying to be all like, oh, <laughs> Couldn't they try chicken? <laughs> like, oh, let me just drink this lemonade, this sweet tea. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was a connection, though. I think even sitting there, if I, when I think back on that time, I was like, I like this girl. Aww. We going to be in each other's lives. So yeah. it's been really cool to watch your journey. And so I'm thrilled for people to get to hear your story. And not just because your story is amazing, but I think your perspective on it and how you continue to evolve that – that you know, okay, I haven't arrived. Yeah. I don't have it all figured out, but the evolution has just really been beautiful to watch. And Aww. so I'm excited for people to hear a little bit about the amazing Rosemary Lewis. Thank you. Thank okay, you. so if you could describe your life in one word, what would you say? Oh, uh, this, oh, okay. I had to think about this. My life in one word would be unlikely. Ooh, it's already good. Okay, <laughs> tell me why. Tell me why. Because I think that there are so many parts of my story from the way I ended up in Texas to, you know, my relationship with my husband based on where we started and where we are now to, you know, my what I do as a career. All of it was very unlikely. Wow. None of it was a path that I thought my life would look like. Mm -hmm. um, and just even in the way that I have friends and community, like none of that was anything that I planned. So yeah. it wasn't but God. Right. <laughs> It's all unlikely. Right. It's unlikely. That's such a good word. I yeah. use that word often when I teach on Rahab. Uh, not that your life was like Rahab. <laughs> but, a little uh, different. A little different. Side note. Uh, but, uh, I, yeah, I love when God does things that seem random to us. Yes. And he makes it work out. Okay, so. Absolutely. <clears throat> in all this unlikeliness in your life, mm -hmm. can you tell me two or three or four like significant pivot points or mile markers in your life where you're like, oh, even if you didn't know it then. Yeah. Like sometimes it's like we look back and go, oh, I see you, God. You were doing something. So many. Um, so you know my story, yes. but for those of the people that are listening mm -hmm. or watching it, um, I have basically was born into grief. Mm -hmm. I was born into what was a sad situation. My mother lost her. before I was born. My mom's first husband died from cancer. Um, he was 28. She was 25. So she was widowed with three mm. children. And um, nine months before I was born, her baby, who was 17, had died from cancer. So I would say that even though I wasn't even born, the fact that that happened, it was such a major milestone in my family's life and my mother's life. Mm. Um, and then I was that oops, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was not planned. Mm -hmm. um, she she was definitely her children were 17, 20 and 21. She was right. already a grandmother. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this unlikely pregnancy happened mm -hmm. and it ended up being me. Um, I was born into a situation where I knew that there was loss, but I didn't feel that loss of love, mm. even though she endured that. Yeah. Um, so that wow. would be probably just from the first time that mm -hmm. I can remember just being around family. I was like cherished because I was a gift that God gave them after losing Cecilia, my sister. Mm. Um, then after that, mm -hmm. my... Wait, were you aware of that growing up as a kid? Did you kind of feel like... I felt I'm special. special. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt special. I, I felt doted on. Wow. Especially by my mom. And That's especially good. by my brother and sister because they were like another set of parents for yeah. me. They yeah. They were 21 and 20. Mm -hmm. um, and then my sister had a son who was my brother nephew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he was right. biologically my age. nephew, right. but we grew up like brother and yeah. sister. So I always felt doted on mm -hmm. um, from the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. And the, my brother and sister eventually passed away. 
both from cancer. Mm-hmm. My sister was 29. I was eight years old. So that was like losing a mom. Mm-hmm. Um, then and my mom's second, my, se- my mom's second, second child, child my mom's period. second child. And then my brother, so they all passed away from cancer. So let me back up. Mm-hmm. They passed away from cancer, those two. And my older brother, Roosevelt, mm-hmm. he was diagnosed with cancer around the same time. He was actually sicker than my sister. Mm. Um, but she, he was sicker than my sister, diagnosed before my sister. But then she early onset breast cancer. Mm-hmm. The doctor told her when she thought she had a lump, you're too young, mm. didn't do anything about oh it. God. And then when she went back, she was stage four Ugh. and was gone about a year later. Mm. Um, so now in my home, it was myself, my nephew brother, who mm-hmm. had just lost his mom. And my older brother, who was sick. And growing up, my nephew, Kovan, he was my nephew. Mm-hmm. We were just really close, but we mm-hmm. bickered. Yeah. Right. And, and I was I was the mean kid, though. Yeah. Like, I was I was I was cruel to him. Mm-hmm. Like, when I look back, I loved him, but I was not kind at all. And I said some really not nice things mm-hmm. to him a lot of the times. Mm-hmm. And we bickered back and forth. And one day I was about who I was 13 and Kovan was a couple years older than me. Mm-hmm. And he noticed that my brother, he, his health was declining. Mm-hmm. And Kovan sat me down at the kitchen table. Mm-hmm. And he was like, listen, you were too young to remember what it looked like when my mama was dying. Mm. I'm letting you know that Junebug, my older brother, he's going to die. Wow. And what we need to do is we have to get ourselves together. My, speaking about mother, mm-hmm. mama cannot handle him and us arguing, we have to, you know, stop yeah. all the bickering. And I remember, like, contemplating, like, okay, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Let me see if I want yeah. you. Okay, yes. Okay, we yeah. can. What a mature conversation. But that means that even even though he was just a couple of years older than you, his life experiences were, were just more than the average adult. Like, so he, he had an old soul, old wisdom about him. Yes. And a, a little bit after that conversation, I went to a church service outside of the church that I was at, and I really accepted the Lord. Mm. I experienced worship for the first time. Wow. My mother let me leave our family church and go to that church. I joined the youth group. Mm-hmm. I was on fire for the Lord. Yeah. I'm preaching to everybody. <laughs> like, like, I'm pretty I've much... I've been changed. I've been changed. <laughs> and so Till May 5th, Kovan was murdered. Mm. Um, so that was like, that was devastating. That was to be. That was devastating because we were supposed to be standing in the gap together. Right. Supporting my mom. Yeah. And, um, you know, up until then, every death that I'd experienced, we knew was coming. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, it was coupled mm-hmm. with with sickness or yes, illness. Yes. And although my siblings were young when they passed away, you know, there was a little bit of relief because they were no longer suffering mm-hmm. because they suffered. Right. Um, to have someone go to school mm. and not come back. Mm. Um, it, it was, it was, it was a lot. And then the following year, my brother passed away, Roosevelt. And the day after Roosevelt's funeral, my dad's sister died from brain aneurysm. So that was four siblings in a matter of like six years. Not not to mention the backdrop of grief that you were born into. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Even though I know all this, it still just brings so much emotion to me. So the, somebody's listening to this going, okay, <laughs> that's just too much. Mm-hmm. It's death after death after death. Like you're young, you were a teenager. Yeah. When the more personal deaths were happening in your life. So you had this backdrop where you may have had a disconnected understanding of, ooh, they went through some hard mm-hmm. things. But now it's you and the the I won't say most meaningful, the more intimate personal deaths happened after you chose God. After oh oh <laughs> listen. What are you sitting there thinking, guy? Like for real God? Oh, I could have just was, been living my life without you. It was more than for <laughs> real God. God. It was literally like I, I had a burning desire because you know, when you, I, I I still remember the first time that I experienced worship and when I accepted God into my heart, it was, it was quenching a thirst that I didn't know that I had. Mm. Right. Yeah. So on one hand, I was so overwhelmed and sad, but I knew that this God thing was still a thing, mm. but I decided, but he got to go in my back pocket. Yeah. Cause you're not getting it right now. Oh God. no. Yeah. Because yeah. I felt like every time I got close to you, in my mind, somebody died. Somebody yeah. died. Died. <laughs> died. Like, yeah. you know, like, so the way that I looked at my life was like, okay, I saw God in the, like, 
two dueling people, mm-hmm. same powers. Yeah. So I spent a good portion of my late teenage to early 20s, you know, having still this stirring in me, mm-hmm. knowing who God was, but I had to love him like a first cousin. Right. You know, because like, you're, there's a conflict, there a is. duality yeah. of a God that that somehow quenches you for the first time where your soul feels satisfied, but then allows grief. Allow, uh, allows because in our mind, pain. we're like, if, if you're doing these good things, God, then everything should be good. Everything should I mean, be good. it could be kind of hard, but not like this. Not like this. And what I really thought, I so I wasn't blaming God, like everything should be good, but I felt like him and the devil had the same power. Mm, mm-hmm. So if I when I get close to you mm-hmm. and when I want to live a life that honors you, I'm open for attack. Yeah. So Which what? Is true. So, <laughs> right. It's true. Be right. But right. you weren't ready for all that. Thing. I wasn't ready like, for all that. Mm-hmm. So I'm I like, so how worship. do I protect myself? <laughs> wow. Who? Mm-hmm. I go back to the church that wasn't feeding me, mm. so I can just check the box. Like intentionally, you did that. Intentionally to say I'm trying to I'm trying to shut down my vulnerability. Yeah. God, you when you have access, I get hurt. I, I mean, you it's good stuff too, but the hurt hurts intentionally. Yeah. And I, I'm gonna be the choir director. I'm gonna be. I was a treasurer of the choir. <sighs> went back. You know, went back to the yeah. place where I knew I could. On the yeah. outside, look Check a the certain box. way. Yeah. But on the inside, I could just be doing my own Unaffected. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And wow. it worked for a while yeah. until it didn't. Until it didn't. <laughs> God's like, you've tasted and seen now. I'm going to let you try for a little while. <laughs> but you're going to miss me for real. Until it didn't. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so how long were you there? And I don't mean in that church, but how long were you in the season before you were like, okay, God. Yeah, so it was a while. <laughs> um, yeah, we can go, we can break it for a long time. Yeah, it was a while. <laughs> right. So I would say like 10 years. Mm-hmm. Like I, I got got married, the whole, had yeah. a whole baby, got married. And um, by the, my husband was not a believer. Mm-hmm. I met my husband a couple of months after my last brother passed away. So he's been in my life since I was 15. Mm-hmm. So he bothered bother you that he wasn't a believer? Uh-uh. Because you were in a place where you're like, I mean, I can leave it or take it. Yeah, he was cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he cute. <laughs> yeah. He, I've seen him. Yeah. You know, he, <laughs> he was cute. Like, he was, but but this was the interesting thing about me when I met my husband, Corey, is that up until then, and I remember my mother, like, well, what church you go to? Mm. And we all went to Catholic school, too. Mm-hmm. So we Catholic school, private school kids. Yeah. And I'm like, well, he don't go to church. And, like, back then, we were from Chicago. Like, if you didn't go to church, then y'all must be gangbangers, mm-hmm. right? Right. And I'm like, nah, like, they actually, it's like his mama and daddy live there. And they, you know, like, <laughs> right. I think they drive a Buick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they real regular. Yeah, they, they real regular. Yeah. Th- but it, they just didn't go to church. That right. was the only thing about them. And he, he literally was one of the first people that, that I met that just didn't go to church, but didn't come from a wayward situation. Right. right. I never experienced that. So since I think if he was, you know, if his family his life was there, different, then it wouldn't yeah. have been okay. Right. But they were very just leave regular. it to beaverish, yeah. but they just didn't go to church. Um, but he would go with me, mm-hmm. you know, he would go with me. Um, I had my baby shower at church when I was on wed. That's the whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the church I went to. Grace <laughs> or not. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, so we ended up getting married and there was this, I didn't know what was missing. Mm-hmm. Right. So for, we and Corey dated a long time. Mm-hmm. And when we finally got married, it's like, mm, that wasn't it. Mm. I thought I thought it was you. No, what a went. realization <laughs> yeah. after the wedding. Like, after the wedding, oh. and I, I mean, we were happy-ish, yeah. you know, yeah. figuring it out. But it was like it wasn't you, and I never forget. We were going through Corey and I were going through a really tough financial time, mm-hmm. and we really didn't like we really couldn't make ends meet. And I had this hundred dollar bill. How I had a hundred dollar bill, I don't know. <laughs> but one thing my mother always modeled to me was tithing Mm -hmm. she always modeled tithing like when I got my allowance I Mm -hmm. tied my 10 percent yeah and I told Corey I was like you know what this is why my life raggedy I have not tithed in years Mm. so I had this hundred dollar bill and I'm like we need to go find a church to tithe it and my husband did not want to go to the church where I was going before it was a Mm -hmm. family church he's like I'm not going there so we literally wrote this lady who lived on our block that we met one time told us about the church once but she kind of was kind of like oh it's like turn two 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 shakes of a lamb's tail like turn up like (laughs) we had no clear direction we were just driving down this street trying to find this church (laughs) to tithe your hundred (laughs) dollars to tithe my hundred (laughs) dollars true story and um we found the church it was like on an off beaten path and then we we joined that church a what? And like we, you liked the church. We liked the church. We really liked it. <laughs> yeah, we liked the church. And we joined that church. And that was the beginning of me 
trying to decide, can I trust God? Again? Yeah. That was the beginning. the beginning of a baby steps of reconnection. Baby like, steps of reconnection. Okay, God. Baby steps of like, hmm, mm-hmm. let me see. Let me see what this is going to do. Yeah. So And so what was that season like for you um, as you kind of reconnecting with God slowly and then your husband also now being exposed to, I'm assuming, some kind of healthy place of worship? Well, how yeah. did that change marriage or how did it change all the things you had already lived before you got married, like that you had decided to put on this shelf. Exactly. Because you can't know God and not deal with your stuff. Uh, oh, right. I don't know right. how people be like, I right. love the Lord. You walking around here angry, bitter, trauma, like rooted in it, not yeah. wrestling with it. No. You got to wrestle with it. Uh, but just absolutely. rooted in like, cool. I'm like, you can't know. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit wakes me up at night like, hey. Yep. You yeah, get right. You got to do <laughs> Listen, yes. you did the other week with so me. <laughs> can't get no peace none you got peace of god i had to call that girl but anyway <laughs> oh <laughs> you need to apologize dang lord all right <laughs> um so how did that what kind of unsettling did that kind of create in you as or or did it like what was it like in those early years reconnecting yeah you know um it was a lot of fear mm. there was a lot of fear around reconnecting and you know i had started to develop this identity that i was a nice person <laughs> You know, I was a, I was a cool person, right. but was I living a life that honored Christ? Absolutely not. Yeah. You know, like we were good, upstanding people, but mm-hmm. so, um, but this is how the Lord will work. So my husband had recon had disconnected from a friend, just not falling out, just kind of lost touch. Mm-hmm. And when he found touch with this guy, right around the time that we were going to this church, the guy's a Christian now. Oh, yeah, and like. I remember Corey telling me, and I hope you listen to this, Cornell. I'm going to call you out. <laughs> Cornell was like, sold out for the Lord. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, not Cornell. <laughs> no. So while the Lord is working on me, um, Corey is still who he is. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he's going to church. Like, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're doing the surface stuff, and we don't even, like, we don't even turn a corner until we move to Texas a couple years from there. But now looking back, Cornell planted so many seeds in my mm. they cried, in my husband's heart, yeah. and they're still great friends to this day. That was a pivot point. For oh, y'all. for real, for real. So Cornell mm. has been such a um, like a blessing. He gave my hus- husband like Miles Monroe books mm-hmm. and would talk to him, but on on his level, mm-hmm. you know, not talk at him. But he was one of the first people that my husband could see his life transformed mm-hmm. and how it ch- was changing his heart, and that was. That was pivotal for us. I think that's so fascinating, too, that God in his grace, that it wasn't like you. <laughs> he was like, why are you not talking about me to your husband? You're like, he's fine. He's not that yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, but that he brought someone else along just to even begin to kind of soften the soil of his heart. Yeah. Um, that's that's just not even the point of our story, but that, well, it might be. That's That may be what somebody needs. That's yeah. already married. We're not going to say go marry someone that's an unbeliever. But if you're already married... Um, then just pray that God brings someone that maybe it's not you mm-hmm. to, to soften the soul of your husband's heart. So, okay. I have to go back to this grief thing because how it's such a marking in your life oh, yeah. and your, even though you're, you're a deep thinker and introspective, your overall vibe is kind of like happy <laughs> and joy and smiles and silly and, like, is that something forced or do you feel like this is just who I am and I've had to figure out where the grief plays into it all? OK, so that is a great question. It's who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's what was modeled for me. Mm. OK, your mom, my mama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my mama. So when I think about my mom and and y'all, I'm tearing up because my mom just passed away. Yeah, it'll be a year. But when I look back on how I was loved Hmm. and I have always, I've known my grief story from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And even when I told you the first Mm -hmm. time, it was like, oh yeah, my mom, oh yeah, your mom's strong. Yeah, she's strong. Mm -hmm. But now I've had an opportunity to experience it from her perspective. And then I think, oh my God, Mm -hmm. (laughs) she went through that and had capacity to love me the way she did. Right. Like it, it is mind blowing. Yeah, that she it just is, wasn't dark or depressed. She could have gone bitter or sad. She, just listen. She could have gone into a room, closed the door, and never came back. Nobody would have asked. Lost Nobody her husband, would, yeah. three children, and her grandson. My mother told me a story uh, once that after her husband died, 
she was she was 25 um and just did not know what to do mm-hmm. like just totally broken she was walking past the bar and she thought to herself i'm just going there mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm never coming back out i'm just gonna go in there and i'm gonna i'm just gonna sit at the bar and i'm just gonna drink, drink my sorrows good. away yeah. right and when she pulled open the door she heard a voice say, well, who's going to take care of your kids if they mama and they daddy go? Mm. You got to go back. And she went back. And that was that. And she t- bought a house and she took care of her children. And for those people who knew my mama, even when my mom was transitioning last year, um, because the Lord was so faithful, he allowed me to get there to mm-hmm. see her and be mm-hmm. with her and to usher her in, which is a whole, look, that's a, a pivotal thing. point in it my is. life. Yeah. Um, just the way that, my relationship with Christ really came to life mm-hmm. in those days. Mm-hmm. But Jada, there were no less than a hundred people that came to her bedside mm. over the five days talking about like, this is my mom. Like when, yeah. when I didn't have anywhere to go and she took me in or she, we, I couldn't have conversations with my own mother mm-hmm. or people who lost children and they would yeah. come and talk about how they lost children. And my mother told them like, Hey girl, you got to pick yourself up. You got to trust God. And I sat there holding her, listening to all these different stories. And all I could think to myself was not only did God give her capacity to mother me mm. after loss. Look at that. He gave her capacity to mother all these people. So she modeled the joy of the Lord. Yeah. And she was a firecracker too, yeah, <laughs> you know, right. but she just modeled that my whole life. Um, and you know, never anything. And my mother, like I said, she always doted on me. Mm-hmm. She always, my therapist said it best. Like when you lose your mom, it's like you lose your fan club. My mm-hmm. mother was my fan club, but yeah. not, but she would also tell me like, girl, that's raggedy. You need yeah, to stop need doing that. Life. Right. Yeah. She was not yeah. just pumping me up, but she definitely, um, affirmed, me and everyone around me, mm-hmm. but she modeled it. She suffered well. Yeah, yeah. And um, Oof, because I had so that powerful. as an example, mm-hmm. um, that's, you know, I, I think I've always known the worst thing. Like most people think the worst, oh, I could get divorced or I could get it ill. Or I'm like, I've seen death so many times. Mm-hmm. I know the worst thing that can happen. So why mm-hmm. be mad? Right. And then the, the, the crazy thing that, that only, I mean, only the Holy Spirit would give you this kind of, perspective is you know i was thinking about um those conversations we were having last year when yeah. you got were able to get get to her and just be with her and i was like it you would think that when god starts to bless you or uh allow your life to turn the corner that it means no more death oh, well. but he's like no 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 it's just going to be a different kind and mm-hmm. and now you see it differently and to even look at how you were able to be with your mother, I'm like, man, there was even privilege in that whole process. Oh. Uh, she wasn't taken. She wasn't, I mean, it was like you got to be in that. And there's a grace, I think, that God gives it that doesn't necessarily remove the hard things. Mm-hmm. But he's like, but I want you to be with me and I'm going to be with you in this thing. And then you'll see that even in the hardest things, yeah. I'm there yeah, and it, I'm good. The most beautiful experience of my life. Um, and, and to back up a little bit, y'all, so I moved to Texas in 2014, mm-hmm. came to one, and um, one of the bu- most beautiful gifts that I was given was that one, I kept hearing two things. You need community, and you need your own rhythm mm-hmm. with the Lord, mm-hmm. right? Community, your own rhythm with the Lord. And, like, what does that time look like? You know, you've preached about it, pastor has, and just carving out that quiet time I'll say for like the last five years the discipline of I'm going to meet with God not every single day mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. for like we if don't I don't do, meet often if I don't do, <laughs> if I don't meet with a four and a half days a week then it's, it's a high mess right? Right, <laughs> right right um so carving out that time and I remember um just trying to but I was still wrestling and so this was a pivotal moment there was a time where there was an altar call Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, we're in Texas. Things are going good. Our environment looks different. Corey and I are thriving, but I feel so empty. And I was holding on to my yes. Mm. I was holding on to my Mm. yes because I wanted to learn the Lord. Now my heart was open to him, Mm -hmm. but I still had a piece of me that I needed to protect from what could happen? Yes, God. What is the yes going to cost still, me? You still be jacking in my life sometimes yes. when I let you in. Yeah. So what is the yes going to cost me? So I never forget, Renee, 
went up to the prayer line mm. and she prayed and she was like, well, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm just so scared. I was terrified mm-hmm. to give God my yes. Cause it's one thing to take my brothers and sisters. Yeah. That's who I lost up into that time. But now I have a husband. I mm. have children. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I'm like, Lord, I don't know if, if I can take that. Oof. Um, but I, I went up to that altar that day and I, I don't think I gave my yes at the altar, though. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is still a start, Lord. Just letting you know I'm thinking about it. But I'm starting to really think about it. <laughs> there was a moment in the closet afterwards <laughs> where I gave him my yes. And as a result, life just started to take off, right? Mm. And not that I, I accepted God for real and, like, everything worked out. Right. But now I had the confidence in him where I was clear on what he's calling me and telling me to do. And my life was good. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Like, great. June of 21, 2021, get a call. My sister fell off her boat and died. Right? Mm-hmm. Which was a shock. My sister and I, we weren't, um, we were not not close, but we were distant, mm-hmm. right? Um, my older sister on my dad's side, which started to unearth a lot of the grief that I really Probably, I'd never even been to therapy. Well, I had to start therapy not too long. But yeah, but so it started to unearth that. I remember telling my therapist in about November because of the work that I do. I was like, look, because I felt guilty for grieving this sister, Mm -hmm. my sister friend who passed away because she wasn't a part of my life every day. Mm -hmm. And I, and my therapist was telling me, look, it's okay, Christian therapist. It's your sister. Right. <laughs> I don't care if you talk yeah. to her yeah. two months yeah. or two years ago. It's your sister. Yeah, you it's can a still, notable absence. You can yeah. still grieve your sister. You don't have to compare your relationship with her, right. with your other siblings, the fact right. that you were closer. And I remember telling my therapist, like, you know what? I got it. I'm going to grieve my sister in December. <sighs> Not scheduled grief. Okay. <laughs> now that's a whole nother level of uh I'm in control. I'm gonna play my life. You know what? Let me get through this season and yeah. then around December I'm gonna sit and be I sad. was like in December, <laughs> my work schedule is going to slow down. <laughs> that's what you thought. We, we are we are going to on vacation. I'm not, and, and I'm like, and better yet, not only am I gonna grieve my sister, I'm gonna grieve them all. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a my, grief month. All my sisters and brothers, <laughs> like I'm just take my time. And the Lord, yeah, yeah. He's like, on November like 29th is when I called you. Like, I gotta go to Chicago, and my mom passed away December 5th. Um, but He let me like just so much honor in that. Like the whole time I was on the plane, I had to get to Chicago. I was praying like, Lord, please don't take her. Mm-hmm. Then when I got there, they didn't let me into ICU. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, okay, well, surely <laughs> you did not let me come to Chicago for her to die tonight. Right. <laughs> right. Then And then the, just that whole week, you know, we were able to bring her home. And But what happened is um, I was able to bring her home to the home that she purchased for her babies when her husband died, that she held her babies in when they went back to Jesus, except Kovan. Um I was able to help set the stage for worship. Mm. Um, the like I my mother was the strength one, right? So mm. I felt like I was in a movie, mm-hmm. and I remember at one point being like, "Oh, oh snap! This is what the piece of God, like this mm-hmm. is." The, I was broken. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was broken, yeah. but I'm like, "Oh, this is the piece of God." There were times where I would separate myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And go and wail mm-hmm. and 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 lament and cry and wipe my face off. And then everyone's at the door like, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. no, I'm talking to Jesus. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like no right. shame. Like mm-hmm. things that I would have been ashamed to do before. Mm. Um, I just had the freedom to really sit in the moment, have tough conversations with God and still see his glory with the worst case scenario. This mm-hmm. is something I've always feared. Mm-hmm. My mother passing away and I, you know, I'm living in Texas and she's right, there. Right. And the worst case mm. scenario happened, mm. but God showed his faithfulness. Yes. And she died in my arms mm. listening to worship music. Yes, I remember that. So. How precious. Like you have to have such a perspective to appreciate, to be able to say, I'm, I appreciate how God allowed me to be with my mother in her last moments. Because if you, if that was your first real loss, or maybe you chose to handle that differently, you, you could choose to just be absorbed with the fact that she's not here Mm -hmm. and that pain is real and that that doesn't go away. But to see the, the, 
see the privilege in that and the ability to honor her and to be present and for God to just be kind. Like, it's hard to think that if you have a life that has been marked by grief, that you can come to a place and still see God's kindness. Uh, fuck but God. I remember just, but I remember being on the phone with you and you were like, he's so good. And I was like, are you sure? Are you okay? Are you okay? You're like, seriously? You're like, I'm, I'm really grateful. And it's such a privilege. And Listen, there's a million things that I could talk to you about. We probably have to do this again because your whole career trajectory and those decisions, they're a whole whole nother episode. We might have to do it again. But, you know, as I'm sitting here listening to you, I just think that um, comfort and joy are just things that God has given to you and also endowed you with to give yeah. to others. And so even now as a person who helps people find where they're going to live and be with their families, um, when you're in education, as a wife, as a mother, as a friend, I think to be in a good mood is is an understatement when someone understands your story. Yeah. And so I think it's such an encouragement for people who feel like, life has been one disappointment after the other. And it may even feel like the disappointments were really painful after yeah. they chose God, Yeah, <laughs> that God did not come and just, you know, stop all the pain. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm so glad that you were, that you shared with us today. I'm very grateful that God has kept your heart soft for him mm. because it's so, we can become bitter about, much less significant things. Yeah. And you have reason, someone might say, to say, God, leave me alone. I'm just going to try to do my best, you know, mm -hmm. and it makes me very emotional. But I know how many lives you've already impacted. And I know how many more, um, not just your story, but how you see your story. Yeah. And God showing up through you, um, through the joy and the comfort that yeah. you bring and to it's, And it's nothing but God. That's why I say it's unlikely. Yeah. Right. It's so what unlikely that um, because like you said, like I've, I've been able to do a lot of cool things. Mm -hmm. Right. But the most beautiful things. And right now I wrote a book. Yes, I you did. And, and it was, trust me, I didn't want to. Like, <laughs> I know it was it, obedient. It was in quiet time. Yeah. That's how I really have been processing the book and um, or processing the grief. And I needed to write it out. I need to write out what those days look like, you know, what it looked like to, and God told me to, mm -hmm. he was like, you need to tell how we sent your mama home. Mm. And yeah. in that book though, I was, I remember like when he wanted me to write it, arguing, like I, you know, I, I don't want to say that part. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I don't want my, I've always known a God that the Lord would use me in ministry in mm -hmm. some way. And I remember saying like, I don't want my ministry to be gr about grief. Right. And he, it was like, riddle me that your ministry. Yeah. Hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> come again right how, how that's gonna work yeah and um yeah and and the the book has been so healing for me because and what it really is it's a love story between me and God mm -hmm. it's a love story that you know you love me enough that you allowed me to to be born into not a perfect situation by any means but to see your love someone have full love and trust like mm -hmm. I have a video of my mom three days before she died I asked her are you scared and she said no, mm. I'm not scared. Mm. No, I'm not scared. And for me to be like, how can I be sad about a, a guy who loved my mama through that? Yes. And has carried her and who has kept her. And now the Lord has brought in all the cool stuff I've done. Somebody might say, you know what? When you posted this, when you were going through that, mm -hmm. I lost my mom. My mom was murdered 30 mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. or, you know, this is what I'm going through. Or mm -hmm. My mother is in hospice or, you know, like you being transparent because they, they look at me and they see me one way. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to say, no, you really going through some real stuff, mm -hmm. but you're still trusting God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you reading about? <laughs> right. Or Tell me about you know, things like that. Yeah. And that, that's the part that, that brings me joy. And when I think about it, that was my mother's life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That, that were, was you her so life. much a legacy of her faith. Yeah. Yeah. I just, we could talk forever. We will have to talk again, but thank you so much for being here. For thank reminding you for me. our listeners and our watchers that when it seems like the result should be abandonment and grief, God can give us comfort and joy. Yes, he can. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure leave a comment, leave a review, share, subscribe, all the things, and we'll catch you next time.